I've got some really big news to share with you guys right now. So the PTR is getting an update right around the time I'm going to be recording this and publishing this and all that. And they're going to change a few more things for us before this patch goes live next week. And some of these last changes are pretty significant. You guys definitely going to want to know about this. We got some changes to tuning ores. We got some changes to gypsum. We got a lot of stuff to go through here. It's not a whole lot, but a lot of it's very, very impactful for the game. So first off, let's start with the downtime. Here are the different time zones. 5 p.m. for East Coast and then 2 p.m. for West Coast in the United States, and then 11 p.m. for Paris. So whatever your time zone is relative to Paris, if you're in EU, that is when downtime is going to start. It'll be two hours, and then these changes will go through on the PTR. Now, as for the changes, well, we got some desync fixes. Fixed to desync with Shield Bash, Ice Shower, uh, Reap, and fixed issue damage takes bleeding sweep or triggering cooldown reduction. Uh, you used to be able to, apparently you could crouch to nullify Baleful Tether status effect. And also, Great Axe's reap ability will do damage now when you have the Collector and Gravity passives unlocked at the same time. Now, as for the end game, if you aren't already familiar, I'm going to get you up to speed on this. So now you can go, you can use Umbral Shards on gear that's 590, not just 600. So if you have a gear that's not legendary, you can bump it up to legendary and all the way to 625, but it will not get an additional perk. So that's, you know, read into that any way that you want to read into that, whether you like that or don't like that. I personally like that change a lot, and I think that it's fair that it doesn't get the additional perk personally, but, you know, that's just my opinion on the matter. But here's something also, a big news drop that I was not expecting to see. To allow players more access to use Gypsum more freely as they acquire it, we've removed the crafting cooldowns on Gypsum Orbs. So that's interesting. Now what you can do is you can get... Uh, if you've collected your orbs and you don't feel like going there every day, which is something I've done. I've been too lazy to just go and convert them into gypsum orbs. And so I have like seven emerald gypsum. Because I go there every now and then, but some days I'm just like, I don't, even, I don't feel like it or I just forget to do it, right? Instead of getting to where you have all these extra ones, uh, now you can just go ahead and convert those all into orbs immediately. Now there will still be a cooldown on the, like if you want to make your life staff uh, cast or something like that. But what that will allow you to do is if you have a backlog then you can go ahead and put it into all like the 10, 15 different things, whatever, you know, amulets, rings, hatchets, just every single thing and spend it however you want like that at least. But most importantly is just that you can finally fix your backlog and not just constantly go there every single day to convert those gypsum, uh, to convert the gypsum into gypsum orbs at the end of your grinding. Also, another big change I already mentioned in a previous video, but if you're not familiar, let's get you up to speed. So, the expedition tuning orbs for every single expedition in the game can now be purchased from the faction shop once a day. Uh, not every single one in the game, though. All, everyone except for the last one. So, uh, as for the tuning orbs of Genesis and Lazarus, those are once a week, though. But all the lower level dungeons, once a day, you can just buy that at the faction shop for some faction tokens and some gold. Uh, so, also... Now, Blight Seeds are tradable, Corrupted Lodestones, Crystals, Fragment Shards, and Slivers are tradable from the Corruption Portals, and the Chisels that you buy from the Faction Shop are also tradable now. So now if you want to make some money with your... Oh, you know what's going to be really nice about this? When you run PvP Influence Wars, uh, you'll actually have more stuff to buy, like more ways to make money off those Faction Tokens, because you'll be able to buy Chisels and then list those Chisels, and Chisels will probably be the highest demand thing you can possibly get out of all your options, potentially, so... That could be nice. It could make Influence Wars not feel quite as sluggish. And then here is some stuff that's really important. This was definitely on... This was new. This is like brand new for sure. So, Star Metal Chisels cost less, or Calcum Chisels cost less, Asmodium Chisels cost less. Asmodium, Asmodium Chisels are 250 instead of 500 coins each now. Here's a huge one. They'd already reduced it on the PTR, and they're going even further. So, Eternal Heart and Elemental Hearts... They only cost 10 of each moat now, down from 30. They were 50 on live, I'm pretty sure. I might be wrong on that, but I'm pretty sure it's 50 on live. Uh, but either way, they're going to be 10 now. That's all that really matters. They're going to be 10 now. And then Undying Heart, reduce the amount of Elemental Quintessence. So that's only going to cost two of each instead of six. So that could, that could actually, that one right there could actually have a small impact on Quintessence prices. I doubt it'll have a gigantic impact because uh, they're still gem cutting, which is like the number one people way people burn Quintessence. But... Could have a small impact on demand. And then, Dynasty Tuning Orbs uh, use less corrupted crystals to craft. It costs one instead of two. Uh, Dynasty Tuning Orbs also use less Obsidian Voice Stone. They use eight instead of ten. 
Lazarus tuning orbs only use one corrupted lodestone instead of three. And Genesis only uses one corrupted lodestone instead of two now. So generally speaking, it'll be a little bit easier to make these. You don't have to go around as many portals now. So that's going to be really nice. And then the mutated tuning orb, they're going to make it even easier to get. Or make it cost even less to get. So now it's going to be five rune stones instead of ten. And powerful gemstone dust, it's only going to be five instead of ten. So now my new price estimate on pristine gemstones uncut. Uh, I don't know that 50 is a good price anymore. It might go down to like, might be more like 30 now. Because that's going to that's gonna dramatically decrease the amount used per week. So, yeah. I don't know. Be aware of that one. That's always why I said be careful with all those ones. So, also, the reduced amount of chisels from one down to two, which I mean, good, because that kind of makes no sense to use two chisels, but okay. Now it uses one, which is good. Uh, some random AI fixes. We also got issues with things not spawning and stuff. Fix that. Fix the bugs. Now, the juniper berries. I talked about this in a previous video, how it was going to create as much or more infl inflation than the presents were causing. And... Um, depending on the server, I forget, was it a million coins a day I'd estimated? I don't remember any now. I don't remember anymore. It was like five days ago I made that video or something. Well, either way, they finally talked about those. They said, to stimulate the post-holiday economy, we've added a limited time rare drop called Bag of Juniper Berries, which gives players coins and juniper berries. It has the potential to reward between 50 and 150 coins per acquisition. And just like I found out on my testing, you can only find three per day. So basically, just to uh, replace the presents because they think that they need to inject that money into the economy. And I could think of a number of reasons, even just like when bots get banned and they have full coin cap, it deletes those coins from the market and things. So maybe they maybe they feel like they need this in order to counter some kind of stalemate on deflation type of thing, I'm not sure. Also, they fixed an issue that prevented the use of Onyx when crafting earrings using Timeless Shards. Kind of random fix there. Fixed an issue with Elite Strongholds not a correct, yeah, consistently applying the appropriate affliction of players to enter visually affected areas, all this stuff. Revi oh god, Siren Stand, uh, Siren Stand revised chest placements of several elite chests to be closer to their associated named enemy. Nah, they'll probably still be grabbable, I bet. Slightly moved one elite chest at Mangled Pox Gate. Nah, it'll probably be fine. Now, that's it for that. So, uh, those are the big changes that got added just recently today when they redo the PTR. And this version, so everything we know now about the PTR between this video and the previous videos I've mentioned about it on this YouTube, uh, where we're at right now, that is the final version based on what they said. So, next week, whatever we, whatever they have on there now, that is going to be the final version. I do want to say, they did listen to a lot of us, a lot of you guys. You guys go on the forums and, you know, kind of complain and stuff about certain things they think should be a different way. And they definitely did make some changes according to that. And I like the changes they made, so you guys definitely gave them good feedback. So, good job, everyone. I actually really like some of these changes they made on the last two iterations of redoing some of this stuff on the PTR. And yeah, so that's what's coming. I think January 25th is when the event ends. So I'm assuming January 25th is when the patch hits. So we'll have to see on that. But that is my tentative kind of date for you on when the release date is going to be. But that is the January PTR patch, man. It is all settled. We have finally settled all the numbers and the values and stuff. Expect more videos about it coming up on this YouTube in the coming days. I'm going to go through a few more things that I need to touch on about it before it goes live. So consider subscribing for that. Also, if you want to follow me on other socials, as always, I plug this at the end, which is in the description of this video below the first paragraph, and below the links to those posts that I just referenced. I will have links to my social socials, which is my Discord, my Twitch, and my Patreon. And Patreon, I give like insider trading tips for things that just can't make it to the YouTube. So anyway, that's it for me, guys. So that's what's going on. That's what to expect. Now we know what happened in that patch, and we know the final version of the January patch, what it's going to look like when it goes to live at the end of this month.